Hey everyone and thanks for joining me in this tool bag for update video. My name is Hannah Watts and I'll be taking you through all of the updates that you can expect to see with the release of Toolbag 4.04. To lay the groundwork, the first thing I need to mention is that Toolbag 4 has now shifted to DirectX 12, which will enable us to provide new features that were not previously possible and also provides better memory handling in scenes. This shift has also allowed us to implement hardware ray tracing for all of you AMD card users, and NVIDIA RTX cards now use DXR rather than NVIDIA Optics. But with all that aside, it's time to jump into the actual user-facing features that you can look forward to in this update. The most significant addition to Toolbag's offerings is the implementation of physical camera effects. There are a few new features and some reworks of old ones, and I think anyone with interest in rendering or traditional photography is going to really enjoy these new and enhanced features. The first change I'd like to show off is the addition of ray traced depth of field. Depth of field in Toolbag has in the past relied on a post effect, which provides an approximation of the effect and could also struggle with transparent materials. In comparison, ray traced depth of field provides a physically accurate effect, with more natural transitions between focal points and backgrounds. To enable ray traced depth of field, you first must have ray tracing enabled in the rendering object. You can see now that where there used to be a checkbox to turn on depth of field, there's now a drop down menu and you can change between post effect and ray traced. There's now an analog looking dial in the properties in which you can physically dial in the aperture setting or f-stop, much like you would with a real life 35mm film camera. You can see with the little flower icons that the lower you drag the number, the more blurred the surrounding elements will become. And, as can be expected, if you drag the aperture dial to the other direction, surrounding elements will become less blurred. In previous versions of Toolbag, there was a super useful but pretty hidden tool, and that was the autofocus using the middle mouse button. Not everyone was aware of this functionality, and so we've implemented a whole new focus tool, which you can access in the toolbar at the top. If I click on the icon, it will turn green to show that it's enabled, and I can then click anywhere in the viewport to set that as my focal point. Additionally, there's a button next to the focus distance which does the same thing. With the focus tool enabled, you can also set the aperture by holding down both control and your left mouse button, and then dragging left or right. This should hopefully help make adjusting your camera settings feel really organic. Dipping back to the topic of blurs and cameras, the next update I'd like to show you all is the introduction of motion blur. Motion blur is integral for creating convincing looking animations or creating the impression of velocity in static renders. And with Toolbag 4.04, you can now add that natural looking motion to your animations and turntables. In the camera settings, you can see that there's now an extra segment for this motion blur. To enable it, tick this checkbox. But please note that motion blur is only viewable in final renders and cannot be previewed in the viewport. The analog dial here can be used to set the shutter speed. Dragging the dial to the left will decrease the shutter speed and produce a more exaggerated blur in the renders. While increasing the shutter speed will be more suitable for fast paced or high speed animations. If you're noticing banding on your renders, this is caused by there being insufficient samples. If you're not sure what I mean by banding, allow me to render out two comparison examples to demonstrate. You can increase the samples here, adjust to a suitable amount, and then re-render your shots. 
So you can see on the example on the left with insufficient sampling, there's not really a blur effect anymore. And on the right, with the sample amount increased, we can see that the motion is now organically blurring the frames together. In conjunction with other physically accurate improvements, lens flares now mimic flares from real camera lenses, and now accurately interact with a scene's materials and lights rather than approximating the effect. So, navigating to a camera in your scene, if I expand the flare settings, you can still adjust the strength and size at a global level. But if I switch to this directional light, you can see that we now have the ability to enable or disable flares for each light individually. And we can also set its intensity independently of the camera settings. And this goes for all lights in the scene. Each one can have its lens flare properties modified on a per object basis. I'm going to quickly touch upon the grain post effect because we've done a lot of work in providing artists with tools to naturalize their renders and grain is usually the final cherry on top. Grain settings can still be found in their usual place in the camera settings. The film grain when enabled now randomizes with each frame in order to help create a dynamic organic result in your video renders. To see this in action, you can enable a preview in the viewport here. You might notice as well that there's now a drop down menu above the grain intensity. Here you can switch between film grain and digital grain, giving you more control over the final look of your renders. You can also modify how fine or coarse the grain is in the secondary drop down menu, but that's not all. For that extra brush of realism, you can now add dirt to your renders via the grain settings as well. This will place randomized scratches and stains on the render, and both the density and size of these can be controlled with their own parameters. With the physical camera effects covered, it's time to take a look at some of the other features that are shipping with Toolbag 4.04. Providing good lighting solutions is our bread and butter at Marmoset, and so we've added the ability to use advanced light sampling. This can be turned on in the render object and does require ray tracing to be enabled. Advanced light sampling aims to reduce noise and improve render quality in scenes that have multiple direct lights but lower sample counts. To enable advanced light sampling, simply tick the checkbox under the ray tracing toggle. Having it turned on can also help to improve the user experience when real-time GPU denoising is enabled. We would recommend only using this option for complex light setups, as enabling advanced light sampling may cause slower render times per sample. However, you can achieve more accuracy with fewer samples, so the net result is faster, higher quality renders. As a prop artist who takes a lot of static renders, I'm pleased to be able to demonstrate some really fantastic improvements to the Shadow Catcher. The Shadow Catcher has always been a great solution for grounding your assets in a scene, but it hasn't always had the most flexibility and so we've been hard at work to change that. You'll see when adding a Shadow Catcher to your scene that there's now many more options provided to artists. And we'll cover those in a moment, but first I wanted to show you how you can add custom meshes as shadow catchers. You can see that underneath the parent object, there's now a shadow plane. This wasn't exposed previously, but we can actually now drag a custom mesh into that parent. And that mesh becomes the shadow catcher for our scene. This is great for adding shapes that line up with your HDRI. For example, this pavement here, as the shadows no longer contradict the background image and therefore produce a more realistic result. Looping back to the object parameters, you can see we now have an indirect shadow option. When enabled, this captures balanced lighting and reflections, but does require ray tracing to be turned on. Material properties for these indirect shadows can be customized with these options here. We now have control over the roughness of the shadows. Dropping the roughness to zero will create a perfect reflection of the asset, which is great for creating very glossy renders. 
Specular properties such as the intensity can also be adjusted in conjunction with the roughness. Additionally, artists now have control over the fade of the shadow catcher, which is something I've definitely wanted for a while. Fade radius and fade fall off can both be tweaked with these sliders. And something else I've wanted for a while, and I'm sure many others have too, is the autosave feature. This has been heavily requested by many in the community and is a great quality of life addition. Autosave is on by default, but you can change the settings by going to Edit and then Preferences. Near the bottom here, we can see that autosave is checked, but we can also adjust the time between autosaves, the maximum amount of saves, and the maximum size we will allow the autosave folder to reach. If you want your autosaves to be stored in the same directory as your scene file, you can enable the save relative to scene option. Otherwise, you can choose the location of your autosaves with this file path option here. Whichever directory you choose, you can open the folder in your OS file explorer. When the folder reaches the maximum size set by the user, the order's autosave will get deleted in order to stay within the limit. And finally, to wrap up this update video, I'm going to show you some of the quality of life improvements that have been applied to Toolbag's library to create a much smoother experience. Firstly, asset thumbnails can now be scaled up and down to fit your preferences. This is perfect for me with my terrible eyesight because I now can have materials huge on my screen. It's now also possible to add multiple new instances of the library window by clicking window and then library. Each library window will remember its position and any filtering options that you set. Again, I find this functionality incredibly useful as I'll often be working with materials, smart masks and brushes simultaneously and having to switch between them and navigate folders can eat up precious time. Working in tandem with this, Toolbag users now have the ability to select multiple assets from the library window and drag them into the scene. Though this only works with certain types of library assets such as materials and skies. Users can also now multicolor tag assets, another great time saver as you no longer have to do it one by one. We've also taken a second look at how downloads work within Toolbag's library. You'll notice now that the icon for assets that need downloading is much more obvious. And once you initiate the download, there's now a brand new progress bar. If you select and download multiple assets, the non-active downloads will be placed in a queue. There's also two new filter buttons to show downloadable assets or assets that have available updates. On that note, Filtering has also been improved on a wider scale by introducing the ability to filter assets used in a scene. This is a great feature that gives you a really quick overview of all the materials or skies that you're using without having to remember everything yourself. And lastly, assets can be inspected in more detail now with the inclusion of a properties window, accessible by right-clicking on any downloaded asset. This allows you to inspect categories, authors, and tags, and also displays a larger thumbnail. Users can also use this dialog window to rename and categorize their own custom assets, giving artists a new degree of customization. So that brings us to the end of all of these fantastic new features in Toolbag 4.04. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope these additions bring you the same quality of life and workflow improvements that they did for me. As always, we at Marmoset look forward to seeing what you create with our tools. And until next time, take care.